Hey, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the Roll podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We have Jamie the Great here. Yeah. Big shout out to Never, Never Forever. And, you know, we have a very special guest. I've been meaning to have him on the podcast. I see him doing big things, doing a lot of different parties, doing a lot of great sets, you know, and, I, and I'm happy to have him here. We have uh, LA's finest, DJ JQ. What's good, man? What's up? What's up, fam? Thank How you guys you for sir? having me. I'm yeah, good. good job, man. You know, enjoying the LA weather. It's cooled down. It's Actually, hot it picked as up fuck, over. Bro. <laughs> it picked up over the weekend, but it was like a lot cooler last week. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, I've been seeing your sets on like R&B and ribs. I know yeah. you come to Vegas. You do Altura. You're mad cool with Exile and AR. You also do the uh, LA party here, Travesuras. Yeah, Travesuras. Oh, nice, right? Yeah, you, got, you got it. You got it. Yeah, Wait, there you que go. Bueno. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> hey, Brooke got a crazy Spanish accent. I love it. And you also do adobo, right? Yeah. I do Adobo and well. you're from El Salvador, uh, El Salvador, right? So my family's from El Salvador. I was born here in LA. Yeah, he's oh, okay, Salvadorian. Okay. Yeah, bro. but I'm Salvadorian, Salvadorian right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Salvadorian, no L in the beginning. Oh, Salvadorian. Yeah, wait, wait, you don't say El, but you're from, but wait, how does that work? <laughs> so you just say Salvadorian. You don't Salvadorian. say El Salvadorian. Oh, you don't. Nah. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get that memo. Nah, it's all <laughs> wait, is that is that? Wait, why why not though? It's all, it's weird. El you Salvadorian, say, yeah, like, Salvadorian. But like, all right, so like, I'll talk to Nopa because he's Salvadorian yeah, too, he's right? Salvadorian. You he'll see say, how he said it? Yeah, I mean, I tried correct. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just saying that. <laughs> no, but like, he'll say, "Oh, like, dudes, El Salvi." Oh yeah, yeah. We say he's Salvi. Yeah. Oh, Salvi, not yeah, El Salvi. Nah, no. he's not El Salvi. Salvi. Yeah, he's just Salvi. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Some I, people on Twitter were like bashing that one, not too long ago. Why? What, why? what are they yeah, bashing I don't about know. it? Yeah, what? I don't even know why they were. Bro, oh, you're like, the mayor like, of all oh, Salvadorian. Oh, it's like it's a racial slur kind of thing. Nah, I mean, I guess some people took it that way, but I, I mean, we say it a lot here in LA. Like oh. as a Salvadorian, we say it like we just like. Oh, yeah. I guess it depends how you say it. Right? Yeah, like he's Salvi yeah, or like you yeah. fucking Salvi. Fucking Salvi. Okay, well, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Chinito call me Salvi. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bro, if you call him Cerote, that's the problem. Fuck, no, I didn't yeah, know that. Okay. That one's. Wait, uh, what, what is it? Cerote. Yeah, you say that one. So I'm not Salvi. saying that. Cerote means sh like shithead. Yeah, no shit. Way. It oh, literally okay. means shit. Well, yeah. I think it's funny, like, cabron, like for Bariquas, cabron is like a bad. It's like yeah. really bad. Yeah, for but us. But then with like, Mexicans, yeah. it's like saying, yo, what up, bro? Yo, like, what that's, up, bro? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's cool. Like, ah, oh, fucking yeah. cabron. No, it's like real different. So when a Mexican says cerote to a Salvadorian, it's like very vulgar. Yeah, that's beef. Uh, that's right beef there. on site. That's like dropping the, yeah. the N-word with the R at the end. Right, right. Yeah, uh. low key. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when a Salvi says cerote to another Salvi, it's just like, oh, what up, bro? So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like blood, right? Yeah. What up, blood? Like, yeah, yeah we brothers what? or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Crooked gets to LA in this. No, no, I'm just asking. Well, you from, you're from South Central, right? Yeah, yeah. I was raised in South Central. Raised in South Central. No, in the in the midst of it. Like and deep then I'm, in it. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So like I'm obsessed with LA Gang like culture. I'm the hood. Yeah. Because it's so different. I'm from New York, so right. he loves gang culture. So when yeah, so yeah. when I hear someone's like from Inglewood or like from South Central or you know, what, Watts, like Watts, Watts, Watts I Compton. instantly want to ask how it was growing up in South Central. I mean, because it's so interesting to me. I I was only in South Central up until middle school because yeah. I was supposed to go to a very dangerous high school. You were supposed I, to go to Crenshaw. Huh? Yeah, I was supposed to go to Crenshaw while I was living out there. But then my family, we moved to the desert, like Victorville. I don't know if you know where that's at. Nah. That's like on the way to Vegas. The, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like two hours from here. But uh, yeah, growing up, it was like dangerous. Like my parents wouldn't let me go out nowhere and like... If we went to the park, as soon as the park lights went off, like, you got to go home. Damn. And well, it's, like, down crazy. the street. Yeah. Show some, wait, wait, wait. So, well, like, what territory were you in? Was I was it, in the Crip area. The Crip area? Yeah, I was, like, down the street from... But is it, like, Mexicans or blacks or, like, how oh, was it? blacks, bro. So, you were, like, the only, uh, like, Hispanic or yeah, I Latin, think, Latin, Latin motherfucker there? Yeah, when I was going to middle school, it was, like, me and, like, 10 Latin motherfuckers. Oh, so predominantly black neighborhood. Yeah, it was, like, very... So, you remember, like, growing up in middle school, like, you had to move different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, like you have how? to, you kind of have to stick together with all the all the Latinos. Oh shit, it's like yeah. it's like jailing. Yeah, it's like jail, huh? <laughs> bro. Yeah. South Central, yeah, he, South like, Central's yeah. different, bro. It's yeah, he's in middle school and these motherfuckers already like thinking like we in jail, like yeah, we yeah, got to move like we in jail. That's were you, crazy. Were you in cruise? Were you tagging? Were you doing any of that? Shit? Nah, 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 bro. I was like. Just was a good kid. Myself. Yeah, I was a good kid. I was playing soccer, so like I'd go home and yeah, they got some good soccer matches down in South Central, yeah, bro, man. at those parks. <laughs> yeah, man, it was amazing. That's crazy. I missed it. No, so you couldn't. Your mom didn't let you wear like the long white tees, and not you oh, weren't dressing like that. Man, nah, because that was basically yeah. And they're from like El Salvador, so they don't really like know 
about mm. a, all of that, you know? Right, right, and right. And, like, anything can be related to to yeah. Cholo culture. Yeah, even, like, having short hair. My mom didn't let me go, like, super short in a haircut. Yeah. Like, I had long hair. I had to get it cut with scissors. I couldn't yeah. get it. Yeah, like, I never Wait, had Wait, what, what is the short haircut thing? What, what the Cholos. If you're bald or you're short hair, that's an indication, like, you you gang. Yeah. Also, if you walk around, you got that haircut. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you like could be on cut. site, right? Yeah. You get hit or, up. Or it's kind of like what set you from you trying to look like a gang. You trying to look like a homeboy, right? Yeah, kinda you kind of like, but I mean, it doesn't hurt either because you kind of like blend in, like you belong out there, like right, right. You know, yeah, but that's dangerous as fuck. You get hit up and you're like, yo, where you from? That's a whole yeah, other conversation. Yeah, I, don't, I don't bang, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what neighborhood you said or who you I, claiming? I don't bang. <laughs> you're saying nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. I'm don't bang. Color, so you, so colors you are neutral. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't get jumped in nowhere or nothing like that? Oh, in middle school, I got, like, jumped, like, out of nowhere. Like, I just got jumped by a bunch of Latinos. I think they were Mexican, but they're just, well, that's just so, random. The, the, Salvi the, Mex- the Salvi and the Mexican beef is really crazy out here. Really? In L.A.? Yeah, in L.A. Yeah, yeah man. It's, For real? It's, yeah. We're not um, supposed to get along. Yeah, man. we're not supposed to, but what? it's like it's just like an imaginary of, beef. Are there a lot of Salvis in, in L.A.? Yeah, there's a lot. So wait, wait, would you wait? So would you say the Mexican Salvi thing is like Boricua and Dominicans? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A little bit, right? They get offended. They call them Mexicans. Yeah, Mexicans uh, get offended. They call them Salvi. Salvi. Right, right. We hate it, but it's like to me, it's like an imaginary beef because I have a lot of friends that are Mexican. For sure. Like one of our best friends, we grew up with him, and he's Mexican. Like he's from Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we get along amazing. Uh, Yeah, New York. We I remember growing up, and I'd be going to like parties and shit and you know like they've dropped that like puerto rico ho and all the dominicans will be like puerto rico no <laughs> damn yeah. that's fucked up yeah. you know i did that to them <laughs> and we were like yo man and like i had like a lot of puerto rican friends they'd be yeah. like man fuck yeah. those dominicans and shit like yo fuck them and all that plato yeah. knows they used to call them I think. oh shit <laughs> oh my god i can't say that right <laughs> no you can say that that's yeah, that they just mean banana and they used to talk all that uh, shit about that yeah that's but this, so that's how y'all were like salvies and mexicans like this yeah, yeah. It was, I'm not gonna get in trouble for saying salvies, right? Yeah, okay. Nah, nah, nah. You good? You're okay. not using. You got a no salvie pass, way. yeah. Okay. Damn. As long as I'm in front pass. of a salvie, yeah. saying salvie. You in front of two salvies? So two salvies. Yeah. yeah. You got backup, bro. I got okay. backup here. <laughs> <laughs> right there, you got little bro, here. little big bro. <laughs> wait, so wait, yeah. where'd you get into DJing though? My because I heard was, your dad was a DJ. My dad was a DJ. Oh shit. Yeah, my dad and his brother were DJs. What were Salvador here? Salvadorian weddings and shit. Like yeah, they were just doing like. Like backyard spots yeah like oh, functions shit. but it was like all latin stuff mainly like wow. my, i guess my dad liked djing or like he used to roll with djs in el salvador and then when he got here That's he like crazy. started his own thing wow his crates must be nuts how uh, they were but uh, wow. it was like all pop stuff like i grew up on like very heavy pop stuff like like what like all like like michael jackson like, okay like um what else like prince yeah yeah like some pop rock stuff, you know. Like oh, he have no like deep like nah, cumbia cuts or anything. Oh like yeah, yeah. That. Like he, we had like deep like Latin crates for sure. Like oh, shit. the cumbia, the corridos, the merengue. Mm-hmm. But not not so much bachata or salsa because we don't really listen to that on the west coast. Right, right. But it's like cumbia heavy and like um, what else would you say? Like merengue. merengue. Yeah, merengue. Merengue. And so like you just you, I mean you were soaking up all that shit. You were hearing it all the time. Yeah, all the time since. Since I was a little, like wow. five years, That's three, crazy. five years old, yeah. And it's he, weird being, uh, me and him were talking. Oh, yeah. yeah, when I got back from the army, like uh-huh. I didn't really have DJ equipment uh, mm. to practice on. So I'd come here. I asked Edwin and he let me come and practice. To the beat source office. To the beat source office. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wait, you was in the army, right? Yeah, I was in the army. But like you, I heard like you, so I heard you were like doing gigs and then you would have to like come back to the base. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Were you yeah. sneaking out or no? Nah, so. Um, I actually got like they really fucked with me in the army because yeah. I would do like some gigs for them. So like the army, they have like their balls, their like their military balls, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Oh, we have a DJ in our company," and they just started setting me up, and I started doing like all the military balls. I started doing like promotion ceremonies. Oh shit! Yeah, and then I would help out um, what we call a chaplain. So he's like a holy person in the military, mm. and like he would get me out of work all the time. Like just yo, come DJ for me. Yo, come so DJ for me. You was like Steve Rogers in the yeah, army, bro. Right? You was <laughs> on tour, like You're Captain, Captain America. Yeah, li- I guess you could say bit. that. Yeah, Captain Salvi. A bit, yeah, Captain <laughs> Salvi. <laughs> yo, so I'll wait. So this is recently that you you like you been in the army and shit, or like, well, how does that work? You, um, I was in the army from 2015 to 2021. Oh, so recent. Yeah. Oh, so recent. you just got out. I just got out. Yeah. Oh I moved shit. Back. Yeah. Wow. After pandemic, crazy. God right? Damn, he got out and. 
fucking hit the ground running. Running. Yeah, but I mean, I was always, I was already, like, picking up steam, like, towards the end of my contract, towards the end of my enlistment. And, like, um, that's where that comes in, where I travel and come back. So I tell them, I'm like, yo, like, I have opportunities here and here. Is it okay if I go? They're like, yeah, just make sure you're all, you're back on Monday. Mm. Like, by Monday, like, at 9 o'clock or what, something. What made you join the Army? Uh, it was something I always just wanted to do, you know? Really? Yeah, since I was a little kid and... Um, I, the opportun the opportunity arose, and I just I just took off. Yo, I got a question. Like, so my boy's in the Navy. Yeah, and he said, kind of like, if you in the Air Force, like no one respects you. Yeah, nah. Because that's like the most like it's pussy a chill job. Man. Really, you would yeah. think like you're so a chill <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> like, no, you know, it's like so. <laughs> They're like office workers, bro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, are they really? Yeah. yeah no, so it's like like Air if, Force. Like, so if you like meet a Marine. Or like, or like, you know what I'm saying? If you meet yeah. a Marine. Yeah, the Marines talk the most shit. And they, yeah, but if you, and you say like, hey, I'm in the Air Force, they, you, you basically like, you, they, like, you ain't shit. Like, you don't do nothing. Yeah. Right? Damn. Yeah. So what, and then the Navy's kind of second. But like, Navy's at least, like, eh. at least in the Navy, you guys are like, hands on motherfuckers. They like, they doing shit, yeah, right? Yeah. And the Navy's actually a very good uh, career field for medical. Yeah. They uh -huh. have like a crazy medical field. Like, if you want to do medical and, like, have, like, a pretty good advantage, join the Navy. So the respect totem pole is the bottom is the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And then yep. it's the Navy, Navy Army, Army, Marines. Marines. Well, the bottom bottom would be, like, um, what are they called? Coast Guard? Coast Guard. <laughs> Damn, oh, why is shit on the Coast Guard, bro? <laughs> yeah. The Coast Guard really ain't shit? Coast Guard ain't shit. Coast Guard is, like, right here, like... What about MP? I heard MPs are also that. Uh, and not MPs are assholes. I heard, but they're at the, kind of at the bottom because they couldn't even be like a police officer. No, right? MPs Some are like <laughs> <Damn>. so. <laughs> so every branch. Yeah, yo. By the way, <laughs> we support the military. <laughs> all we like you know. Military. Thank you, <laughs> like thank you for your service. <laughs> You're funny. All the military. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> What's I'm in that coffee? Man? And I didn't say hey. none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying none of this. So all my military personnel, we yeah. still got his tax money. So it's nah, cool. Nah, Don't nah, even worry nah, about man, it. Nah, <laughs> you pay a lot of taxes too, man. The first. Nah, but so, I heard military police ain't shit because. They, they they couldn't cut it as a cop so they became a military police that's what uh, i heard i don't know about all that okay. but i ever so every branch has like their own military police oh okay, okay so every okay. branch has an mp like you know division or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. there all right so yeah. like in the army what were you doing like what were you me i was a mechanic a mechanic yeah i was a mechanic and i was attached to special forces so like motherfuckers that you'd see like on commercials doing like cool shit yeah or like whenever you see them like on these little boats and they're like pulling up to shit, mm -hmm. like I'd help them out. Like I I take care of like the boats and the engine and all that stuff. Make sure they got all their gear together. All right. So if some shit starts popping off and there's a war, you gotta go, right? Nope. No. Nah, but in the past five years, you would have to go. From yeah. 2015 to 21, right? To 22. To 22. Yeah. You would have been on call. I would have been on call. Yeah. Yeah. Were you were ever worried and shit about nah, that? Nah. Nah. I would. You was ready. I would have gone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back. I miss it sometimes. You do. <laughs> what do you miss the camaraderie? Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, I miss the camaraderie, but it like there's like you know structure. I feel like out here like there's not as much structure, but I guess it's the job that I was doing in the army as well. Like it was. It's pretty easy and laid back. Like, I wasn't doing shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. That's where our tax part. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where all your tax money goes. Going. <laughs> Good to know, JQ. Good to you're know. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, thanks for flying me out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I want I want to talk about Adobo yes. in D.C. Yep. It's very special. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. But it's also like it's hard to do because you do Exile, Saltura, and then you do uh, Travesuras, right? Right. But then on the West Coast, it's completely different to, especially D.C., I feel like it's a yeah. completely different world. And a lot of Salvies are over there, right? Yeah, a lot that of Salvies, a lot of Central Americans. Central, America. Central Americans. Central Americans, South Americans, mm. a lot of Caribbean out there, too. Yeah, so, like, you know exactly what to play? Yeah, yeah. How do you know this? Like, are you talking to East Coast motherfuckers a lot? Just nah, it's know? just, I just well, love the Central features. Central I'm Central American. American, so I know what we like. And mm. then it just kind of, like, translates easy over there. And, like, some of the stuff I can't play over here on the West Coast, I can play it easy Like what? There. Like what? Explain. Like dance hall. Or like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know? Yeah. Dembo. Like dembo. Yeah, oh, like dembo. Like, way more crazy. dembo, Way right? more dembo. Bachata. Like, deep, 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 yeah, deep Bachata, cuts. salsa. salsa. I could play that over there. Over here, I have to keep it more cumbia, Mexican regional. The reggaeton is a little more... Um, it's Would more commercialized. It's more commercial over, over here, yeah. It's more commercial. Yeah, more top side. forty on top the west 40s. coast. Top forty, yeah. We were talking about like uh, what hip, where hip hop and reggaeton is right now. Oh man, it's bad. It's tough. It's that. It's I bad. Think so, yeah. So what every every what everyone is saying about hip hop, it's actually happening with reggaeton. More reggaeton right now, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. Why, can you explain like, like, like explain a little? I feel like just with Bad Bunny's last two amazing projects, you know, the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Un Verano Sin Ti and Yo Hago Lo Que Me Da La I mean, it was, it's basically like off the wall and thriller, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Right? Like he just went crazy. Right. You know, two yeah. albums back to back. And then, you know, he had this other two, the other two albums there, but mm -hmm. those two just like killed crazy. the game. Like, right. how do you top that? Like Raul Alejandro, he put out two good al albums Uh, Carol G, her album was good too. Like yeah. I enjoyed it. Like, and I think it's more dedicated to the West Coast than it is to the East. Why, well, why do you say that though? Um, it's like a lot more Mexican influence to that, and we have like a very Mexican heavy demographic over here on the West so Coast. So Carol G, her her new her newest album, and a lot of the singles, they just they catered to like a Mexican audience. Oh the yeah, West Coast. yeah, I feel like it. Yeah, she has Peso Pluma in there. Yeah, she's got Peso Pluma, and she's got a few like she's even before she's had like a few Mexican regional tracks mm. that she tried. Yeah, you know. but but it, well, so like you're saying like what's wrong with this? Like uh, it, it's just not it's not as global as like the Bad Bunny shit, right? What right, doesn't translate as well for the mm. East Coast at least. Yeah. I mean, like there's still amazing tracks that you can play, you know, like um, Okie Dokie. Okie Dokie. Yeah, she's got like five like honestly club. She has five club hits right now. Yeah. Oh, Provenza, Provenza, Provenza? The one that, yeah, yeah, that one's amazing. Like that one does very. That's well. That's old everywhere. though. That's an old one. Yeah, That's but it's been still, it's, Yeah, yeah. It, I feel like it, that it got like probably got biggest, bigger, right? Yeah, it probably got bigger now. Yeah, yeah, because that's like that's like that's like in some rooms that's like a low key sexy like up tempo right. yeah, exactly. song, and then in other rooms it's like kind of like sexual seduction. It could be like a banger, right? Banger, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Am I am I wrong on this? <laughs> no, no, I, no, I love that <laughs> the, the correlation you did there. <laughs> no, but it's right, right? Yeah, you're I'm right. on point. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, on, yeah. I'm <laughs> on top of this. <laughs> the only thing that I would say it is all the Carol G shit for as many hits as she has, right? None of it is crossover. None of like it. Like, I can't okay. play it in an open format room. No. Nope. Like, I could nope. play, you know, like, all the Bad Bunny shit. Yeah. I mean, you may be, you know? you may be able to play Provenza, because that, if... I mean, yeah, but... Yeah, it's like... No, but not even. That's, like, an early no. record. To right. Me. Yeah. But you, you know? gotta remember, though, brother, Bad Bunny's, like, one of a kind. Like, you can't... There's nobody gonna replicate him yeah, in so. a male or a female version of him in, in, in a reggaeton or Latin music. Like there's not there's not it's not like when J Balvin did Mi Gente and that shit was fucking everywhere. Yeah, you're not gonna see that again. So you're saying, but you're saying reggaeton right now is a little stale. Yeah, it's very stale. Like hip hop, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Like, but explain like what there's there's no hits. Is it getting redundant? Is it getting like? Yeah, it's because everybody wanted the same thing, especially here on the West Coast. I mean, like everybody wants to to hear the same thing all over again. Like it's the same hits, and like you can't really get into the B sides because. On the West Coast, once you play like something they really don't know or are familiar with, it's yeah. like they look at you crazy, like what the fuck is this? I notice the problem sometimes. Like I don't know, in the past two years, maybe. Yeah. In the past two years, I started seeing that a lot of the reggaeton that was coming out in the past year and a half to two years was was too slow. It was like 80 BPM. Yeah. When everything before was like 90, 100. Yeah. And that's when everything was like kind of popping. That's a sweet spot. But yeah. then everything kind of just slowed down like two years ago, right? Yeah. Am I wrong? Like, no, you're right. And then it became, and then everyone had to make like an edit for the for the, all of this <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. And they had to make it faster. Yeah. yeah. Right? Right. It doesn't make no sense. It was like everyone was hitting this like 80 BPM pocket right that was like that reminded me of like maybe the late 2000s mm -hmm. when like atrevete was popping mm -hmm. and all that shit it was like this yeah. very like like heavy like fucking yeah, slow right double time i mean rao and um carol g like their new recent albums they came they came out with like 90 and up bpm tracks you mm -hmm. know and that i love like some of rao's work on that album but it's just you don't get that feeling the same feeling That Bad Bunny gives you, but it, the the problem is with Raúl, there's no crossover hits. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't translate. Like all the reggaeton shit in the past year and a half, mm -hmm. maybe even two years, none of it crossed over. Like none of it. Yeah, the, I mean, the, oh, probably just one with um, what is it, Loquera? Loquera oh, yeah, was like pop, Loquera it was popping was on popping. TikTok too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Do you think that Bad Bunny kind of fucked that up though? Yeah, because everyone just I wanted wouldn't to hear that, so it over it overshined yeah. all, all these other artists that were putting out dope shit. But I don't even think he fucked it up. I think it's like nobody's trying to get to that same level as him. You know, mm. like he put that shit on a fucking pedestal, and like we just want to see like everybody else like get up there with him. Yeah, and I f like to me the clo the person closest that could get to that is Fade, but oh, like yeah, he kind of like tanked with this uh, project that he did. Because, like, if you listen to Fade's music, it has, like, you could feel the emotion and, like, people really fuck with Fade Heavy. Yeah. You know? But there's, a, like, there's a, same thing with Fado. There's a bunch of fucking hits. 
but none of it none crosses of it over. Crosses no. over. Like, is the peso pluma is, is it working on the West Coast? Is it working on the East Coast too? Yeah, it yeah. is. I played, really, I played peso pluma for um for Walter's birthday. It went crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. What song? Oh. Yeah, yeah, Sola. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry, I know the deep cuts to yeah. Pesto Pluma. So I was like, hey, what's getting out <laughs> uh, there? We what? played, uh, there was another one that we played. I PRC? Think, PR, no, Lady. I think I played Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Oh, Lady Gaga. Yeah, Lady Gaga. It's crazy. Like, you gave me a crate of all this banda, right? And mm -hmm. all the Pesto Pluma. Right. And I did like a kind of a Latin party in um, in Riverside, mm. in Cali and shit. Oh. And the reggaeton was cool, but then they just wanted to hear banda. Like, yeah. They yeah. just want to hear all that Peso Pluma yeah. and all that shit. Bro, I gave you all that first time that shit. But yo, like, I have, I you know, like, I've been DJing a long time, okay? <laughs> okay. I don't know why <laughs> it's so difficult for me to blend in these fucking Banda records. You it's like impossible. Oh, no, yeah, you gotta drop it on It's one. impossible, right? No, yeah, yeah. Bro, I don't blend them. Yeah, I know I don't I don't either, but I feel stupid when I just drop them shits. Nah. See, but you gotta hit them at the right you time. You like reverb it, you reverb it, and then you drop it, right? See, this is how I know you're a West Coast DJ. You gotta drop it from the one. Like, I do drop it like from the one. Like the New Yorkers, one. bro. No, no, I'm not trying to blend <laughs> it in. <laughs> But you know, like I, I try to just have it be like, okay, like yeah. maybe I could, and then there's no way to like. Blend nah, it. oh, it's, nah, it's nah. tough, man. You just gotta drop it from the one. You, gotta, you, you just gotta have a good mic game, though, right? Not even yeah, that. Not even bro. that. Like you just, just drop it throw it. Yeah, just toss nah, it. But like, it sounds better when you reverb it out. You talk some shit, and then you drop the next one. Nah, nah if you want to, but you don't have to. You know what I do? I do. I use the little snares of the hats, like. Cause they all have them kind of similar, so I'll just drop it from right there. The guitar riffs, the you always use those. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all confusing to me, man. I don't understand where the fuck is going, what's going on. I don't even know where to cut it. I'd be like, all right, this melody sounds like the hook. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. Sometimes it's tough because yeah. the structure is very different. But it's mad different. Yeah, but you can play uh, a hook in a verse. But again, if you don't understand it and you don't know where it's that. I mean, I you know, I'm like I said, I've been DJing a long okay. time. It doesn't sound <laughs> horrible. You know, it works, but I just wish I Oh, no, you definitely accomplished I just wanted to be like, I'm not the only motherfucker that No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I've heard some people just, train wreck. Remember, if you looked at some of the songs that I sent you, I, it says, start at this time, start at this time. I don't read that time. shit, man. <laughs> Fuck you, then. I fucking <laughs> yeah. listen. I listen to this shit, and I drop it. I'm, I'm telling you the hot spots. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, you and Exile, I love, like, Exile in Las Vegas at Aruda. Right. I love his mic game. Yeah, I heard. Amazing. I heard your mic game is nasty too. Or you know? It's decent. It's I talk, decent. I talk shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. What shit. do you say? All right. So like this weekend, me and my friend, he actually has a really good mic game, and I was like, um, hey, pause. Yo. Yeah, you guys are just <laughs> mic gaming. How did you know? Yeah, yeah. Mic game. How do you good. know? How do you know? <laughs> his mic game. His mic game was nasty. <laughs> pause. There you go. But I can't remember. He was trying to like hype up the girls, but I was like, "Hey, ladies, if you go on." If after the club you're going to get a plan B, make some fucking noise. You, you say know? it in English? I say it in English. Oh shit. Yeah. Cricket isn't like that. Yeah. And I'm I don't, like I don't like motherfuckers speaking in English at a Latin party. Or he doesn't like that. I don't I'll like talk that. I mean sometimes I'll talk in Spanish. That's why I, I that's why he loves exile. Uh, no, but I also like exile I've never heard anyone talk the way exile talks on the mic. Yeah. Where he's very he sounds very like Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but I'm sorry, like, but, please. But you know, but it's also like he's unapologetically doubling down on his Mexican like heritage with his voice. Yeah. But then it's there's like this soccer like commentator <laughs> energy, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a little like Telemundo soccer, like yeah. you know? Yeah. I don't know how I'm being racist right now. <laughs> I'm being like real I'm being a I'm being a stereotypical asshole. Yeah, Exile, we're gonna yeah. get you a Telemundo application. Yeah, 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 Telemundo. No, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I get the what soccer commentator. Well, it it yeah. rises up, it just keeps rising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, but no one no one no one's on the mic like that. So, no, never. The only two people that I like, I enjoy listening to like yeah, that yeah. are is Exile and my homie Refresh from San Diego. Refresh from San Diego. Yeah, he's nasty on the Shout mic too. Yeah, yeah. Shout, Shout out to, to Dynamic Refresh. too. Dynamics, that, Dynamic, he's my, my favorite game one. is good. I, that, he's my favorite but one. But he can switch accents. Yeah, oh. bro. He's like Dominican in one, <laughs> in one song and then Mexican the next and he's just moving around. He can switch Word? that shit. Yeah, yeah I've and never. He, his phrases are the best. He has great yeah. catchphrases. Yeah. I've never met him. Like, I've never met him. Oh, no, no, you got to go yeah. to San Diego and go to his Thursday night. Yeah. Bananas, mm. but he has yo his mic game pause like his mic game <laughs> yeah, is nasty. Very, and remember dynamic, uh, your and mic game. when he was on the podcast, he was breaking down all the accents like yep. Puerto Rican, Colombian, yeah, 
um, that's dope. Dominican. Nah, and all he's that the best. Shit. He's the best. Yeah. yeah. Wait. So who do you think is the top motherfuckers on the mic? Pause. And like, I'm gonna give it pause. dynamic. I mean, I love I love Exile. I just think he's just mad original, man. Like no, no he's, no, he's definitely top. You know, I've never heard anyone like that before, man. Nah, definitely. Yeah, he yeah. gets like a crazy interaction from the crowd. We gotta make sure we gotta check out JQ's fucking uh, mic game and see how what he's working <laughs> with. Hey, pause. Yo. I mean, there's some gigs where I get more on the mic than other gigs because sometimes okay. I'm like so focused on like just DJing that uh-huh. I don't pick up the mic. And like, actually, you guys helped me pick up a mic game because I was like, damn, everybody, they keep talking about mic game, mic game. And I oh, used to not have a mic game at all. Well, in the West Coast, really. we don't really, we don't really go after the mic game. Yeah. I, ca- I had to learn it when I was, when I would go to Vegas and I would listen to, well, even here, but more so when I would go to Vegas and DJ Reach. I don't know if you ever heard of him. No. Nah. Dude, Reach is a monster in the mic. And then you would hear him and then you would hear Neva. And then you'll be like, oh shit, this is the the one tweak I'm missing. Right. That this is the thing you kind of have to put. Just because we grew up on on radio DJs and it's all good blending, which yeah. is cool, but the mic game is just, it's like your 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 shit goes on steroids. Right. So you have to pick, you have to pick that shit up. I'm kind of curious to see like how you would approach an East Coast gig like that versus the West Coast. Because I know you probably play more Dembo, right? Yeah, I'll play more Dembo. It'll be... And it's a, a lot of uh, Salvies. A lot of there. Salvadorians, a lot of Central Americans in general. So I just like, Pick at them a little more than I would any other. So like, what's else. what's like uh what's like an anthem you would play for like, like all the cumbia. Central uh, cumbia Samposana. Yeah, cumbia Jamie, Samposana. you know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's cumbia Samposana. I go straight to that. Like anything by Aniceto Molina, which is a huge like Colombian artist, but mm. we love him in El Salvador. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he has like songs about El Salvador. Like he loved us. So like yeah, so like well, shout out to my boy Raul in Miami, right? Oh, love him. Like he'll go like vinyl digging. Like mm-hmm. I remember I went to Mexico City with him, and yeah. he was, and I was just rolling with him, and he'd be going to all the record stores in Mexico City. Like we be going in the hood, like these record stores that yeah. like, no one goes to, right? And he'd be looking for cumbia records, Ooh. but it, but it's like it's crazy because when I think of cumbia, I think of Mexico, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's like Cumbia is actually from Colombia. Colombia, Colombia. Yeah. yeah. So he's like looking up these Colombian Cumbia records yeah. that are like worth tons of fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta think yeah. about it. They never really got pressed like that. Right. Yeah, but yeah. he was like, he was breaking it down to me, and they were playing some of the shit at a lot of like the restaurants, like the the high end restaurants and the lounges and shit. Yeah. And it just sounds like the Cumbia sounds crazy. Amazing. No, like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I have some friends like that out here. They got they're called Cumbia Fever. They throw a Cumbia night every Thursday. Yeah. Like they've been consistent for a few years. Where now. At? In um, downtown LA at La Cita. Oh, La Cita. Yeah, I love La Cita. Amazing. But man. what's the difference with uh, between Col- uh, Colombian like cumbia and like Mexican cumbia? I don't like, know. Uh, if this is, is do you guys know? Or you yeah, guys yeah. Like so Mexican cumbia is like slower. Like it's is slower it? and it like feels heavier. Like it's just heavy. Like every everything sounds right. heavy. Right. It and almost then, it almost sounds like the beat is going backwards. That it's like, like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, right? you caught on that, Kurt. right? It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm right. It's yeah. like, yeah. Vroom, but it's like it's heavy, like a heavy yeah. fucking the bass. bass. Yeah. The bass, yeah. yeah. And it's then, like very trappy, almost. A yeah, bit. you can say that. It's like you know, when I'm listening, I'm in the lounge and I'm like, damn, this shit is hitting. Like, yeah, it sounds dope. Red pop smoke so that's like more Mexican. That's more Mexican. Colombia, uh, cumbia from Colombia is like, like more percussion, mm. and it's like faster. You know, more dancey, more dancey, way more dancey. Oh shit! Yeah, so, but it's crazy because uh, sometimes um, Mexicans will ask me, "Can you play cumbia movida?" Was like just some cumbia they could dance to, right? Right. And I play some like up tempo shit like that, and they're like, "Nah, like like this," and it's some like way slower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's way slower. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like I'm, I'm thinking like in, in a lot of the open format parties we're doing, especially a lot of the DJ curated parties we're doing. Yeah. Like um. Like a lot of the new music isn't like in high demand. No. Even like even the Latin music to hip hop to top forty music, like everyone wants to hear throwbacks. Yeah. So man. with like a lot in the Latin parties that you've been DJing, that's what they want, right? They yeah. want more throwbacks. They want more yeah. they want more variety. They yeah, want you to kind of dig a little bit deeper, right? Right. It's either like heavy bad bunny or like um still bad bunny? They yeah, still man, it's, Bro, you cannot get you away from You can't get away from bad bunny. But me, I'm like I just treat it the same way, like how open format DJs in hip hop or like any other genre treat it. I do that with the Latin side. Mm. So I just like I will play like throwback pop Latin music or throwback um, rock and español or throwback anything else that's not like really reggaeton, but it's like iconic. Like we remember to we remember uh, growing up listening to it. 
Like, yeah, you like everyone heard fucking Mana at some point in their life. Like, the mom cleaning on a Saturday morning, yeah. it's a must. So, it's like you're gonna, you throw these things, and it's now it's nostalgic and now it's good to reminisce on shit. But when you're growing up, you're like, I don't want to hear this shit, but now everyone fucking loves it. Yeah, that's that anthem right there. And yeah. like, I played it at a rumbazo at the adult, um, Altura Festival. The Oye mm-hmm. Mi Amor song? Yeah, that I shit play- will go like no matter what. Nice. Celia Cruz, all that shit. Yep. That's so, so a lot of throwbacks is just hitting right now. Yeah, Even like throwbacks. the throwback 2000 reggaeton is like Oh hitting, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, deeper yeah. cuts is like starting to hit, right? Um yeah. so maybe not so much the deeper cuts, but yeah, the throwback stuff. Mm. Yeah. On the West Coast, I wish I could play more deeper throwbacks um, right. reggaeton, but I can't. Like what what like what artists you don't play? I don't think it's like artists really, it's more of like song selections. So oh. like I wish I could play uh some of uh Daddy Yankee's like older stuff. Mm. Or like some like what? Of, like what? Like, what would go off on the East Coast, but not here on the West Coast? Uh, Son Las Doce. Like, I could play Son Las Doce on the East Coast, but I can't play it out here. Mm. Or I could play, like, um, I feel like Tu Principe. Like, it works on both coasts, but it, it goes off crazier on the East Coast than it yeah, does over bro. here. It's so funny. I was talking to this, uh, like, this this young ass, like, uh, like you know, we was in the club, and we were talking about, like, music. Yeah. And, like, this girl was, like, I was, like, telling her about Tego. Like, this mm. maybe three years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like we we I was like we was like all DJs and we like played Tego and then she was just like this sound like some old ass shit <laughs> like well, I was like yeah he sound old as fuck like well, this shit ain't dope yeah. and then like two years later Tego starts popping on popping. the West Coast and every everyone's playing Wasa Wasa and all the all this shit yeah and now it's like uh, like like all of a sudden the West Coast is like I, how does that happen like, well well I'm gonna y'all are late to not like Dago no, that's crazy no 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 no, no. Dago was big in the early 2000s no, it was. Here. yeah but here? it wasn't but like the young kids don't know no that. okay well that's different the young yeah, that's kids not, don't know him. yeah they don't know him yeah it's, it sucks because even with like Dago like I wish I could play like some of his older tracks and I can't like, like I wish I could play Metele Sazon but it doesn't hit the same as um, mm-hmm. what's Paquete that other Rosen. joint that, what's that joint I love Punta y Aparte Punto y Aparte Punto y Aparte is yeah. amazing amazing love boom, that record boom, boom, boom. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying like but I don't even know if they know that shit, right? Nah. nah. Remember I dropped Dago one time, Cricket, and you're like, get out of this shit. No one's that. <laughs> but he was like, yeah, nobody knows that shit. I mean, I'm surprised they even know Evie Queen. Like, the newer kids. Yeah. And I think that's just because Bad Bunny kind of gave her a cosign. Yeah, the one. Yeah, but, like, they don't know that shit. Yeah. Like, they, they, they just know, like, the newer shit. And I mean, they just know her one track, um, Yo Quiero Bailar. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's literally it. But she has, like, other shit. Like, when she did um, Yo Quiero Saber. Yeah, and I was like an amazing. She just took the the dance hall rhythm and just started spitting over it. Yeah, I don't even know. I only know. You know, Evie Queen's a shit. Go, yeah, man, she's dope, man. You know, there was a track that you dropped that I fucking loved, and I I went and I researched it and I downloaded it. It was a uh, Te Quiero. Oh, bro, that's my. That was like my anthem. It's like for a the slow longest. jam, right? Which yeah. one is it? Oh, Te, Te Quiero. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Yo, I saw a video of him playing and I was like, yo, I was like, that's dope. And I was like, the yeah. melody was dope. Crazy. Uh, yeah, that was my anthem for like the longest. And then I heard like a bunch of DJs start playing. And I was like, well, yeah, they're buying this shit, right? Play. That's like basically yeah, like the Keisha Cole love. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good. A good, that's yeah, a good yeah. Yeah. I got a few more for you if you want them. For real? Yeah, I got a bunch. I would man. love that shit. Bro, that's uh, a good one. I have like amazing. Like when I did, um, when I did the Lunai concert with uh, Exile on them mm-hmm. bro I got into my bag on that one like that that's probably one of my best mixes I've really done. yeah Which is crazy. and I went I just went deep in the crates but I also like played new stuff and like I just I was just like all over the place I heard like you're one of the few DJs on the west coast like that is like your crates and your knowledge of the music is so vast like, yeah you're like uh, like Exile would say like he would like you know he would DJ before you yeah. He would drop all the bangers, yeah, and then he'd be like, "Yo, like, let me see what you could do." Like, you would get on after him, right? And you, you'd, you'd be playing some shit out the <laughs> pocket, <laughs> out the and you still fucking kill it. That's yeah. what he mm-hmm. said. Yeah. So yeah. there's been a few tracks with that. I guess I've played or delivered different, and he's like, "Fuck, man, I've played that and it didn't work." And mm. then like, we did. Um, he's got me for like his uh, old school night, yeah. and like he opened for me, and then he was going in, like he was just playing like throwback reggaeton, and I was like, "Yo, like." I'm loving this right now. Right, right, right. And then, like, I just went in and I just, like, just, oh, let's go here, let's go there, let's go there. And it was just way different from what he was doing. But not a lot of, uh, like, Latin West Coast DJs could do that, where no. they could do the East Coast and, like, they, they, they're they on top of the East Coast shit. Well, yeah, no. I'm going to tell you this right now. S- Salvi's have an upper hand in a lot of uh, even Mexican DJs because they connect more with the Puerto Rican music than the Mexicans do. Wait, how's that? Yeah. They have more of a, a relationship with it. So Salvi's mm. will know the deeper cuts and and 
that kind of helps them to be in the East Coast more than the Mexican oh. people. Especially because uh, the, the Central American, like, they're pretty heavy on the East Coast. And Mexic- Me- there's not a lot of Mexicans in the East Coast. Maybe now, but early 2000s, when you would hear somebody that's Mexican in the East Coast, it was like a fucking unicorn. But the Central Americans, which is Nicaragua, uh, El Salvador, um, Honduras, they're living over there. So that's mm-hmm. why he kind of has a... A cheat code in a sense because he knows everything that those people they will like it over there mm. yeah and we don't have like a our own genre or we don't have like our own artists you know like you got to think about it mexico has like a vast majority of like right. their own mexican genre right right like they don't have they don't only have cumbia they have cumbia corridos they have banda banda norteña they have uh duranguense you know they have like just subgenre after subgenre yeah yeah and we just have cumbia and like we're not even on the Caribbean side of Central America, mm-hmm. but like we we border with these countries that are like near the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. So we just like listen to them. So like the song we were talking about earlier, the one two three song, that's a punta song, which is like a subgenre of um, soca. Mm. So like that, like all the way down, like you get punta. Like wow. that's, that's that. yeah, but that's the only genre I kind of go with when I think of like a Salvadorian party. Punta is definitely they love that shit. Yeah. It's very fast. It's it's like one hundred and forty like, BPM. Yeah, one fifty. It's like one fifty. Wow. It's up there. Oh, it's, like, it's like drum and bass for y'all. Yeah, man, it's amazing. I love it, and that's like an enduring. That's like an enduring genre, bro. When you drop that shit, it starts like one, two, three. The fucking Salvadorian women wow. run. It. <laughs> that's yeah. like soca Jersey club for y'all. Yeah, pretty much. Literally, that's crazy. Yeah, you know it's funny. I went to Mexico City, and I was like going around in the clubs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy, like they fucking hate reggaeton. Like a lot of people talk shit about reggaeton. Damn. Like they fucking hate that. Well, like we don't like we don't we don't want to play that fucking reggaeton and and all this. So like when I'm going Mexico City, Mexico City. Oh, they're heavy in cumbia. Yeah, they, they fucking cumbia. hate that. Yeah, they fucking hate it. It's so crazy though. Mexico City, like all the nightclubs are run by cartels. Oh fuck. Yep. Yeah. They took it over. No it. So like mm-hmm. apparently, I don't know. Sometime in 2019 or 18, there was a club owner. That was fucking with the cartel. Like I think the cartel, one of the cartel dudes felt disrespected in Mexico City by one of the club owners. You don't do that. Damn. And then what? Well, I don't do what? No, <laughs> they, you don't disrespect. The yeah, cartel. yeah. I don't know. Like maybe it was a misunderstanding or some shit. Like he couldn't get in or he couldn't get to his table. I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. Teach him a lesson. Yeah, but then you know, I mean, the club owner disappeared. And then and the club was up for sale. <laughs> no, no. But here was the thing: like the the police didn't do nothing, the government didn't do nothing. So then the cartel said, "Oh shit! Like we could like take over the club scene because obviously the government and the police don't give a fuck about club owners." I mean, so they they literally took over the club scene. So the cartel took all of, over all of like nightlife in Mexico City. That's fucking good. well. The so, crazy thing: a lot of the tourist spots, including the clubs, a lot of the resorts, they're all owned by cartels. Yeah, so like when I went to the clubs and I go to the bathroom, there's a dude and a shorty in front of the bathroom. And they're like, yo, you want cocaine? It's out in the open. <laughs> and you could tell that the cartel is running that shit. Yeah, yeah, bro. And they're like, yo, cocaine, cocaine. I feel like that's everywhere now. No, no, no. no, no, no not no. like that. It's literally out in the open. It's like saying cigarettes, cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like, yo, it's literally out in the open. Like, So the shorty is selling the cocaine. The shorty's like, Cocaine, cocaine, yeah. cocaine. And I'm like, no. And if you want it, the dude, like, he okays the shit and then she'll, like, somehow. Yeah. But then you see, like, these these little, like, these kids that I know are in the cartel. Mm-hmm. It almost reminds me of, like, City of God when I saw it. Oh, fuck. Like, these young-ass kids running around the club like they own the shit. Yeah. Like, they, I saw these kids, like, like kind of pushing their way through the crowd. They went behind a the bar. They just grabbed the bottle. Yeah. I know, are I they dressed a certain way? Yeah. They just, you could tell, like, they fucking... They well, just, they like, all you know? wear the same thing. They wear the polo with the numbers on the... On yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you can hear him saying, don't talk to my man. Yeah. Huh? My man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> no, but crazy. it was crazy, like, just seeing, like, yo, know, they were just so- selling cocaine out in the open. I'm like, yo, this is what the cartels made. Yeah. Of the, that's how they doing the shit. But they're getting double the profit. Like, they're giving you... The coke and the drinks. <laughs> and then they sober you up with the cocaine. And then you go back to the bar. They're putting <laughs> coke back in the coke. Do you guys ever like spin outside overseas or do anything? Um, I got to spin in El Salvador this year for the first time. Oh, it was shit. for a wedding. Yeah, it was dope. That was an amazing time. Wow. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. They're from D.C. too, so it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Is that a destination wedding? Yeah, it was a destination wedding. 
Yeah. And one of my friends, the fr- my friend that plugged me in, he went and he's a DJ too. So I was like, you want a DJ, bro? So he got the DJ for his homies. Oh shit, that's dope. Yeah. So is that your favorite city to DJ outside DC? of? Yeah. Outside of. Yeah. Have, have you have you done New York yet or not? I have not done New York. I've, yeah. it's, it's you think you're ready works, for New hopefully. York? Huh? You think you're ready for New York? I think if I listen to a DJ, yeah, one night, I think I got it. Really? Yeah. So I scared. think it's gonna take me like one night. I'm scared of New like, York, bro. I got to DJ with um with a few of my friends from New York mm-hmm. in um in DC. And man, that energy is just different. Yeah. Man, yo, like they had that thing jumping. I don't get nervous before I DJ. Like sometimes, like if I have somebody opening in that I know is dope, like I don't usually get nervous. But with them, I was like, all right, I'll mm. fuck with that. It's funny, I was in New York, I went to PhD and Marty Rock was DJing. Oh yeah. Trust uh, Marty. Yeah. Shout, Shout out to Marty Rock. Rock. He's the boy. And he and it was a it was a Spanish promoted party. Yeah. Of like a, it's a Latin party. Mm-hmm. But it's motherfuckers from Spain. Oh shit! So like the promoters are from Spain, and then they're like, but there's all these lat- Latinos in there, and it's like Spanish, a Spanish crowd, right? But then there's like a like a large Colombian crowd, and then there's like you know, but then there's like the Bronx, Dominicans, and Puerto yeah. Ricans a little spread out a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was like interesting that there was like Spanish promoters promoting the Spanish party. The right? colonizers are back. The co- <laughs> 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 They're back to their old ways. No, it ain't, but, but then Marty Rock was throwing, like he he threw on, like uh, he was shouting out all the Spanish shorties and everyone. They were screaming. That was like a majority of the crowd was Spanish. Mm-hmm. But then he dropped like some Colombian, like some Colombian bangers because wow. there was like a lot of Colombian shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like they sounded like Colombian folk songs or something. Oh, he was dropping um Vallenato. Vallenato. Vallenato, yeah. Mm-hmm. What is so that? What is that? Just like... It's like... It's like Colombia's music. It's like their their people's music. It's yeah. kind of like it's like cumbia, but less like more tropical. I guess you would say. Okay. Yeah, a lot more faster, like yeah. 100 BPM and shit like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it was just crazy because it was like, you know, I used to be kind of confident. I'm like, yo, I could play like a Latin party. Yeah, I could play. I know <laughs> my reggaeton's cool. You know, I'm like, I know a couple of Dembo now. And when I when I go and I hear Marty Rock, he's playing like Dembo. I never heard. Like, yeah, yeah, like deep ass cuts. Like he's playing the forty two stuff now. <laughs> like forty two, they call it like forty two. Well, I like just this is like these. See, these, I don't even know that shit. There's these, there's these cuts like, like like motorcycle, right? I don't know that shit. Yeah, motorcycle. I don't know what that mm-hmm. shit. You know yeah. that, right? Yeah. And then there was one that I was like, no, I need this one, and because this is like the perfect. It was like que perra, que perra, que perra, que perra mi amiga. That's a que perra, yeah. que perra. Que perra. Que and I was like, it was like a amiga. chant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the and girls I, love that. Yeah, anywhere, yeah. anywhere. So I'm like, yo. I don't know about the whole record, but I'm gonna loop that part. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because nah. like, even if you don't know that song, yeah, I was like, that goes perfect in between like 4K and you know, <laughs> man, literally, literally, that's literally how we play yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like we go into, we just let that chant, and yeah. like we get out before she even starts. Yeah, singing. yeah, I just loop that shit, and I'm just like, all right, like I can play this other shit. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what that means, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like my girls are bitches or some shit, right? No, <laughs> what is it like? I guess she's like saying like what a bad bitch my friend my best friend's like a bad bitch yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I'm, <laughs> okay I was on the pocket yeah. no bad you like better yeah. bitch <laughs> better yeah. Than my yeah we me and my bitches yeah they, <laughs> hey, kind of like that straight up <laughs> yeah I know that shit yeah. yeah no no but I was like yo I love I you know I was I was shazamming like all of his shit yeah and it was like so much demo but I was like I'm really not gonna be in a room where I'm gonna play a lot of this shit yeah because it's so deep but it's but, fun to have. It is fun to have. It is fun to Dembo's have. Dembo's fun, but it's like the closest thing I could think of to like dance hall right now. Yes. Because it's just like, it's really fast tempo mm-hmm. dance hall. And it's the same rhythm. It's the same rhythm. And I love that rhythm. I love yeah. That rhythm is in my in my veins. And it's just really about <laughs> how you organize it. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Delivery. Yeah, yeah. Delivery, everything. Because yeah. honestly, it does sound, it can sound redundant. It does. But it's like really how you fucking put it together. Right. Which I think is fascinating about Dembo. Yeah, and like every artist sounds different on the same rhythm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like they make it them. They make it theirs. I got a question: Is like the Latin tech house? Is it growing or is it or is it like kind of like fading out? No, it's got its own scene. Like it's, it's, its own. Yeah, so it's, it's own got its own thing. scene that's growing. Yeah, right? it's its own thing that's growing. Interesting. Yeah. It's but probably I think gonna like take the a masses minute. like it though. Yeah, not everybody. It's not for everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I've just been like noticing that you know a lot of rooms don't want to hear house or EDM as yeah, much. It's anymore. weird because some some crowds here want to listen to like the poppy stuff, the EDM stuff from like. 10 years ago. Right. Mm. But they don't want to listen to the new stuff. No. 
but like it's it's but the old stuff is just honestly just like kind of top 40 music mm -hmm. yeah you know what i'm saying so i put that in the category of top 40 music so we talk about like you know rihanna found love yep you know uh the clarity sing along yeah the sing-alongs yeah. clarity uh titanium yep. all that shit to me is in the same category as like fucking katie perry and like yeah. all that shit right now yeah yeah but like all the like i, I swear like edm or house it nope. just somehow it's not getting played as much in those rooms and they nah. they don't even have the attention span and the tolerance to like hear a five minute house set or no. tech house set right oh, now you can't do that in that but like it, no but it just started happening like maybe like you know in the last i would say this year when i felt like it was getting phased out mm, yeah i see what you're saying you know I'm, what i'm saying because even in a latin party i could play like hugel right yeah i could play like those joints but it feels like uh like the shit ain't hitting as, as yeah. much as it. Oh, no. But I mean, even some of those joints you can't really like stick to in a in a straight Latin party because they're just gonna be like, all right, let's let's keep it going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's, let's go. This TikTok generation is crazy, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, they, this let's time, go. Yeah, because <laughs> it, I feel like everything's becoming more of a karaoke party. You know, it's funny. He just said TikTok generation, yeah. which is exactly where you just said the, the 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 karaoke aspect of it. They just want karaoke. They, they want, want the fifteen to just seconds. Everything. Of, yeah. It's just like sing along. If it's not a sing along, it's like all right, we'll vibe to it, but we need another sing along. Right, and if you think about it, it's not just TikTok's fault at this point because it's Spotify. Because now everybody has like their own little playlist. Hey, I want to just listen to this, and it's on my Spotify playlist. So why can I, am I? This is just on my Spotify playlist. So why am I going to go out of my way to go to a club and listen to music I don't want to listen to? Mm. Oh, this is popping on TikTok. So it's like both of those things make it a little harder for us. But but the you weird get what thing, I'm saying? yeah, I get what you're saying. But the weird thing is like the like the house scene and the EDM scene is growing. It's just like it's getting slightly phased out of open format. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, just yeah, more yeah. of a segregation right. now. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like maybe two years or three years ago, especially when Tiesta was dropping all that new oh, shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And then some of the ghetto shit, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it seems like this year, it's like there's no integration of it. Yeah. And do much. you think that's TikTok's fault? Do you I think it's because they're like making like older records more popular than like EDM records? Because if you go on TikTok, you don't listen to a lot of like EDM records unless you're like looking for that in specific. But like a lot of the algorithm is like just old records just getting and, like, popular. Remixes. I yeah. mean, I, I've also noticed that a lot of the newer EDM doesn't have those big sing along moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The like, build ups and the. Yeah. Especially a lot of the tech house shit and like, yeah. you know, especially like the Skrillex and the. the the fret again yeah a lot of that shit is deep it's all bass lines it's, it's very deep man yeah. and there's not a lot of those like fucking those moments where everyone can sing along right mm -hmm. which is why like you know like some of those john summit records work a little bit better yeah because he has some of those vocals in there and shit mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that you could play but i don't i don't know man it's just to me it's a lot more segregated too at the same time yeah but i think now that edm like it kind of came and went in a sense it could live in his own planet now and it doesn't have to be in the mainstream aspect like you don't have to do like edm to pop you know, you know what man? but it's not it's not really that i think survive. every genre is actually getting very segregated everyone's create every like everyone's scene is kind of getting like a theme yeah well, no it's like very heavy latin there is no middle ground for latin right now like too much unless it's like but it sounds played out yeah the middle ground for for latin just sounds exactly as played out as the middle ground for hip hop uh, and the middle ground for top 40. Yeah. Yeah. So like those rooms that are like, yo, open format, we're all in this middle ground of yeah. like, yo, we have to please everybody yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. But like, if you really want Latin, you have to go, go to the right. Yeah. If you really want EDM, you have to go, go to the left. left. If you want hip hop, you gotta go, you know. Yeah, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's, it's like all these scenes are getting more and more segregated and like focused. Yeah. yeah. You know, but there's the the open format is becoming more of a karaoke room. Right, right. Where and I mean, I'm in some open format rooms where I could get like I don't just stay in Latin. Like they say it's Latin, but I'll like oh I'll take it to like some disco or I'll play mm -hmm. like some Daft Punk. You know, right. But it all it's all sing along. It's all it sing along. Be, yeah, it has yeah. to be like a yeah, sing along, yeah. or it has to be something that like people know. Right, right. But like uh, it it can be like some dancey stuff in there. There's yeah, for there's sure. There's a few stuff I played low. Over the weekend, and I was like, "Damn, I haven't played this in a minute." Flow rider? Yeah, no, I was I like, "I don't know, I can't yeah. play." Like that. <laughs> I was like, hey, it got the crowd back, so I was yeah, like, yeah. "You know what? Whatever." I mean, whatever gets the job done. I have a question: Do you sometimes feel like you get typecasted to only do Latin parties? Yes, all the time. Because even now, we're just talking about Latin. Yeah, we're parties. just talking about Latin. Well, he looks like yeah. Daddy Yankee. But it's so. <laughs> that's the thing, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's yeah. one of the. Looks like Daddy Yankee. Yeah. Oh yeah, you was on Spider's podcast. He kept saying that, right? Yeah, it's because when I shave, I look like Yankee. 
Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Congri. No, but you get you feel like you get typecasted all the time, man. You oh, don't like God. it, or you do like it. You're fine with it. I don't. I mean, I don't care. I don't right. mind it because when you throw me in that room with the open format guys, you're gonna be like, all right, he can he can keep up. You know, like it's one of those things where it's just like I know I have a nice bag. It doesn't matter where like you kind of throw me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it might not be crazier as like somebody else, but I can I can handle it. I can manage. Like I did an R and B party, like one of the biggest ones in the country, and I was like, damn, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, I. I did hip hop night on Saturday. Do you feel like you got to shift your marketing a little bit to start? Like, do you want to like do more open format, like non Latin party shits? Yeah, I think now that like it's kind of taking a decline. Like, I'll probably the Latin party's taking a decline. You think? Yeah, I think I think they're kind of. I think reggaeton's just at a like a decline right now. So it's you got to remarket. So it's affecting the parties. I didn't yeah, know that. I think so. I think so. Really? I mean, it was it looked crazy over the weekend, but we noticed it like. Just because it's good one night doesn't mean it's going to be good on every night. True. And we've been seeing it um, decline ever since, the be- I guess, the beginning of the year. We'll say since the beginning of what people thought the curse was going to be, you know? What was the curse? Uh, Bad Bunny dating the... Oh, Kendall Jenner? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Really? Yeah. I think that's when that happened, it, that started like a decline. Really? Yeah, because a, a lot of the girls started like, yo, Bad Bunny betrayed us. <laughs> No Is way, that a thing? really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so like you're talking about the Kardashian curse. Yeah, the Kardashian. How they like curse. fuck over yep. every artist or every yeah. athlete, and they fucking taint their name and taint their like, yeah, taint their swag and everything. Taint everything. Yeah. Wow. I mean, oh, I didn't I, even know that was a thing. Yeah, man. It was no, big. I mean, it was, it was that's crazy. Them. That kind of makes sense though, a little bit. Right? Yeah. It was right after Coachella. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. If you think about it from that point. To like now, like reggaeton's kind of like been taking a, a down. And it's Kendall Jenner's fault. And it's, it's Kendall Jenner's it's fault. It's Kendall Jenner's fault. She first did a tequila, <laughs> now she took that buddy. Yo, <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of people were like not happy with that, with him like dating her. Well, he when he got on stage at Coachella, he was basically saying like, you don't know my life yeah. because of pictures and all this shit. And he was kind of going at his own fans in a sense. And I, I think he did it in, the, in this album he just dropped. But now I understand that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know there was a fucking thing like that. Yeah, at the beginning, he's, like, talking to everybody. He's basically telling people to fuck off. So that was the Damn. decline of yeah. reggaeton yeah, and think, then some of the Latin parties. Was. Yeah? Yep. But it's also the Latin parties got, like, maybe oversaturated. Oversaturated, everyone, especially in L.A. Everyone had a Latin party. Everybody in L.A. has a Latin party. Everyone. I said, I saw Vegas. It's like, we want a Latin. Every club is like, we want a Latin <laughs> night, too. Yeah. Everyone's like, yo, we got it. Yeah. Who are the DJs we could hire on this Latin Exile. night? I, I, <laughs> bro, I got hit up. They're like, yo, can you do a Latin night here? I'm like, yo, this is not going to work. There's no Latin people in this casino. Like, yeah. Let's just keep it pushing. And Latin people aren't, we're not bottle spenders, man. Yeah, that's the one thing. I, I, that's not true. We're not. That's nah. not fucking we're not, true, bro. Nah. We're not. Hey, man, go back to when. Mexicans um, are. I, yeah, oh, Mexicans, Mexicans are. are. Mex- I, don't, I, I, don't, I feel like Mexicans and Colombians, maybe Cubans are. But like everybody else, not really, man. Why do you say that? Wait, why do you say that, Kirk? Are you crazy? Like Miami is fucking full of yeah. like bottle popping ass Cubans. And, what did and I everyone. say? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Cubans. Cubans. And like motherfuckers spending money like that, but not across the board though. Yeah, Mexicans it's not dropping the board. money. Are you crazy? It's like people. Like, that, mm, it's but, like Latinos that want to like blend in and give into that American culture. Oh, uh, you get me? I don't know about that. Really? I, I think I think that's what it is. Because bottle service is like European, actually. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I is think it? that shit hit like Miami first. Bottle service hit Miami. Oh, I'm sure. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then New York was like, yo, let's fuck with like, because yeah, because yeah. they, was, they was pushing, they was making tons of money in yeah. Miami, exclusive doors, and then New York kind of followed. Yeah. But, but it is, I mean, like, yo, man, Latin, what are you talking about? Like, they Mexicans and everyone, like, Cinco de Mayo in Vegas is like huge. I remember like back in the day, it'd be like, Tons of Mexicans just buying bottles, bro. Popping mm, shit. I it's been in. The, it's been in the thing. I don't know. Am I wrong? I don't know, man. I'm I, not I, from I, Vegas, I, I, <laughs> bro. Why do you think the biggest Latin nights in Vegas are all in spots where there's free parking? Yeah, true. We don't like to spend money. Look at Altura. Is there a bottle pop in there? Look at uh, maybe uh, barely. Uh, what's that shit called? Uh, maybe Blue Martini. But look how cheap it is to buy a bottle there. I don't know. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Like I, I, we're not going into the casinos and paying casino fee money to pay to park and then go into the entry. We're not doing that. I don't know what kind of like fucking Mexicans you're talking about though. Like I'm talking about me. <laughs> like I'm one of them. <laughs> you never bought a bottle in your life though. No. Yeah, we're not spending money like that, bro. 
all Latinos aren't spending money like no, that. No, I, I think I'm you're not crazy. Like, like in Miami, like yeah, you're talking about Miami, Miami, bro. That's Miami, a bro. sexy scene. They spend and, money out there. Yeah, we're not. That's, you know yeah. how expensive it is to live in Los Angeles or Vegas. I mean, I feel like Florida would be a lot cheaper to live in than. Oh, now like we talking shit about Florida. See, right. no, no, I'm just saying the truth. In dangerous territory, right, bro. Now. You can't live in LA comfortably. You need a roommate. <laughs> I'm yeah. just gonna tell you, and then you're barely making rent. You're eating ramen noodles. Like we're not gonna spend the money, the rent money on a bottle. I don't I'm know. Yeah, you, man. I'm, yeah, yeah. That's not it. So you're talking about West Coast Latinos. Yeah. And Hispanics don't like to buy bottles. Not, yeah. Not yeah, really, yeah. yeah. That's what y'all saying. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Mm. But maybe in San Diego. Or like Orange County. Yeah. You know? Riverside, IE area. Y'all yeah, gonna Riverside, get in IE. I feel like y'all going to get in trouble. We're not going to get in trouble. No, I'm not going to get in trouble. I feel like y'all going to get in trouble. Were a lot of land people popping bottles at the Riverside spot you were at? No. Where exactly <laughs> but that's a different spot like you know but you bring it up like motherfuckers not popping bottles i just think i feel like i feel like it's more generational too because yeah. i feel yeah. I f you know what i mean yeah. like i feel yeah. like as we move forward into nightlife there's more of a general admission crowd than there is a bottle popping crowd yeah you know what i'm saying and i think the general admission like if i've noticed a lot of nightclubs are pushing more general admission tickets than they are sometimes bottle bottles. service because oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, bottle yeah. service is kind of like an old it's like a, like kind of like an old like you know what i'm saying yeah. like flex but yeah it's a little bit like the older motherfuckers want to pop the bottles yeah. you know yeah like okay. that's like a natural thing for them to be like popping bottles yeah i feel like younger crowds they understand general mission a little bit more yeah like i think they, so like ga it's like a lot of these parties even like the dj curated parties and all of these spots even vegas they're pushing general limit they're pushing tickets. oh yeah 90 yeah. ticket 95%. sales and i feel like a lot of these uh, curated parties don't really have bottle service like it's they should though you think so i do i feel like it'll ruin it like no. dmv like the adobo party yeah like i think that's why it's so amazing too no but i think you need some bottle service you think because so? even like everyday people has some bottle service yeah it, but it shouldn't take over. But it's very small. No, but that's what I'm saying. It has to be. You have to have a high minimum or like you have to have just have a minimum that like, you know, and then it can't be the main focus. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I do think you're like you're limiting the amount of money that you could make by having bottle service. Mm. I think there is a, a place for it that won't ruin the party. <clears throat> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. Cause, Cause for me, like if like, for example, R&B and ribs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, like. I know motherfuckers that would go there, have a great time, but they just want a fucking, they want to be comfortable. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. I but you don't, I, I, I know like what you're saying. That. Yeah. Now, I don't you think it would do ruin it if it was like off to the side. If it you was off so? to the side. You think yeah. Bottle Service wants to be off to the side? They want to be friends. Yeah, they want no, to be No, 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 no. You can't bro. put him in front and say, That's the whole nah. reason you're getting a Bottle Service. But even, yeah. flaunt. even the everyday people, the fucking bottles, the tables are off to the side. Nah. They're off I, to the, like, the people are the main factor. I think that's just you, Kirk. No, I feel like it would take away from it. No, I feel like some of these parties just are amazing because they do. I was going to say, maybe the kids don't care about the Bottle Service. They just want to go. Yo, a great time. Party. I'm telling you, you can make an extra. You oh know. no, you can definitely make money. No, oh, you yeah. can make an extra 15, 20 grand just off a of bottle. But like then, if you have like four, three tables set up, you know, yeah. three thousand. I, I give you that. Three thousand minimum. If you send three to four tables, that's fine. But if you put ten of them bitches in there, you're kind of <laughs> sacrificing the, you know, what what this party stands. Yo, fam, for. Like, it's not gonna fuck it up if it's off to the side because a lot. You know, what I'm saying like some people just want to spectate and people watch and be comfortable. Yes, yeah, and let okay. them do it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, let them do yeah, it, yeah. but it's like, yo, you got to pay this much to get that comfort yeah. and be a part of the vibe. I'm telling you, no one who's going to any of these DJ curated parties are going to be like, yo, I want my table in the middle of the dance for the line. It's yeah. like, you, they they get it. They yeah, get yeah. it. Like, yo, like we, we want to come to this shit. It's a vibe. And I just want a table and I want a bottle. I just don't want to walk to the bar every fucking time. I see what you're saying. You but I feel like with a party, I feel like with a party like R&B and Ribs, it'd have to be at a bigger spot for sure because... It's you know how small it is. Yeah, El Rio is too small. El Rio is small, shows. man. I mean, yo, like I, I know I was just talking with one of my homies, man, from San Diego, and he was like, Man, like, we just were sick and tired of going to the bar. And it was like it was yeah. just like waiting for the drinks. He's like, I literally told the bartender, like, yo, give me like ten shots of tequila. Yeah. But just like put them in. They just had like their own kind of mini flask or like <laughs> of just like tequila that they that's were just pouring into you, you know what else it would be good for a spot like that yeah like the baseball carriers like the dudes selling at the baseball games where they oh, just yeah. got like <laughs> like the vendors the vendors <laughs> yeah that's not gonna fuck up the vibe <laughs> but the fucking tables are gonna fuck up the vibe <laughs> a fucking guy going hey beer, beer here he's just gonna beer, beer here <laughs> 
<laughs> That's not gonna fuck up the vibe. Fucking. I give it a house party vibe. Yeah, Get like a more house party. Yeah. No. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> the fucking worst. Maybe, ma- maybe, the maybe you are right. Maybe three to four tables. No, off just to the do side. It. I That's cool. Tell Nopa, I was like, yo, just put it off to the side. It's gonna be cool, man. Put you it know. next to the fucking barbecue ribs. Nah, I'm gonna tell Nopa he's gonna have pupusas. He's like, like, no fucking way, man. He's like, no fucking way. I'm just like, yeah, he's not gonna get into. He's not gonna sacrifice. What he started for. Yeah, but I understand what you're saying though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how it could ruin the vibe. Yeah. I'm not a bottle service person myself, so I'm like, I don't do a lot of bottle service. and I don't really drink, so I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind a little yeah. hospitality, <laughs> Yeah, <man>. yeah. <laughs> bougie. Especially when Bad I'm DJing. Bougie. Yo, yeah. I'm DJing. Like, I, I don't mind a little hospitality. I mean, like, you're DJing. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. Yeah, but come on, man. I don't even drink, so I'm like, yeah, just give me a water. I'm chilling. Yeah. You're chilling? Yeah. Good for you. Give me a pack of... Give me a, give me a cup, pack give of me Capri a, Suns. Yeah, give me a bucket of Capri Suns and we call it a <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, call it a day. Fuck my sugar levels up <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. So what like, what are you working on right now? Like, what are you focusing on? Like, you know, 2023 is ending. What do you want to focus on for 2024? Um, Right now, I'm going to school still. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm still going to school. Ever since uh, I got out the military, I've been going to school for music engineering. Oh, shit. Does? Yeah. Oh. Uh, like, what school are you going to? Uh, the Los Angeles Recording School. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, heard, I heard you got some edits on the low. Yeah, I do, But man. you don't, you don't, you don't, we, like we, we, we don't put them out yet. We you just put, put it for out. yourself. You just like using them for yourself. Uh, like, your, like, your, per, like, you know. Yeah, personal. Your J, like your JQ stash. Yeah, I have a big just personal stash. I feel yeah. like they just work. Um, for personal use more than they do for like somebody that wouldn't know what to do with them i don't yeah. know because they don't have like a they don't have like a uh, like a complete four bar eight bar intro you know and i just, mean it doesn't matter but are the edits good yeah the edits are solid i mean exile plays them i have like dudes from new york play them why don't, why don't we yeah. <laughs> but you I'll don't want to put you don't want to put them on yeah. a band camp you don't want to sell them shits actually that's another thing that we're doing um me and my brother we're working on a project where me and him team up because he's heavy into production and i'm heavy into engineering oh nice so we just take our djing aspect and like put it all together yeah your brother's a dj too yeah my brother's cooked by t cooked by t cooked by t yes sir i say he listens to the podcast too you're yeah. young though 22 22 how long you been djing for since i've been djing really yeah he's been djing since he was like 10 oh shit so when i was uh, like when i was like 15 like well oh damn so that makes it i'm there's like an eight-year difference mm. so like when i would go and like take a like a piss break or something he'd like just jump on for a bit you know and my dad would give him like okay play this or like he'd be like oh after he played this song usually he plays this song so I, he'd be like damn they, it's like it's like just fucking making a factory of djs at this house i know how does your dad feel about you know their two sons his two sons like you know all, all being djs and shit. oh man he loves it he, he does love it yeah he loves it man shit the episode with chaos oh yeah. yeah oh yeah he was talking about how like his his mom wasn't supportive in the beginning yeah, yeah. I, I mean that was the way it was for me man like right you know, you just kind of got, you know, they worried and then you just got to prove to them that it can be doable. Yeah, exactly. They just don't understand. It's tough. It could be like discouraging, you know what I'm saying? Because like I would come home and, you know, and uh, I, you know, do my homework, but then I'd like spend all night like working on music. So yeah. I'd literally be in my room like working on music and like working on videos, like editing with two VCRs at the oh, time. Shit. And, but it would, I'd be in the room. I'd be like staying up till like three, four a.m. And then I got to go to school. And she's like, yo, you're not sleeping. And then, like, yeah. she think, like, I'm falling off of school. So then I would come home, and then, I, like, my records would be gone. Damn. And then I and I look in the dumpster, and my records were in the dumpster. Yeah, I can And see. she would, like, throw my shit out. <laughs> I remember, like, I cried, yo. Like, I was like, I was like, yo, man, like, this is fucked up. That sucks, man. But, yeah, but it's, like, but this Asian parent shit, they want you to, like, go to business school and all right. this shit, you know? Yeah, I mean, growing up, before, like, I started getting into DJing, my mom was always talking about her brother's a doctor and like she wants us to be lawyers and yeah, this yeah. and that. But she loved music and my dad loved music, you know? And like it was just something that we kind of like, it was kind of like something we just tried out because my dad was doing it and yeah. like we enjoyed it. And so we just kept pushing and now they like brag about us, you know? Nice. Yeah. Well, like next year, so you and your brother, you guys are going to focus more on production then? Huh? Yeah, more on production, more. Like with like edits or like original music? Like you think? Uh, originals and uh, remixes. Crazy. Like we got a, we made a remix to one of Bad Bunny's new songs, and like we showed it to a, lot, a few people, and they've enjoyed it. Are there, is there like a genre that you want to push more? Like that that's maybe not, you know, doesn't have a presence in like the, the like a lot of the clubs or in the rooms. Yeah. Also, oh, like punta, like yeah. the sub genre of soca. Yeah, yeah. Like I push that, and especially um, bachata and like salsa on the West Coast. Right. Like I feel like there's some rooms 
That yeah, but that's still that. like a, a, a like a, a like new out here in the West Coast that hasn't been re- yeah, thoroughly yeah. accepted, oh, right? No. Like it was popping at one point because of Romeo Santos and Aventura. Yeah, like those last two albums that they did. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. Like they don't know like the deeper cuts. Yeah, yeah. You get a lot of requests, but it's kind of the typical shit like un beso. Yeah, those mm-hmm. locos, like the typical crossover shit. But like I don't know why, but. I guess slow dancing with a girl doesn't really pop off on the West Coast <laughs> for bachata and shit like that. It takes a minute. Nah, that's where the banda comes in. Like, the banda, the corridos, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, like, popping. So, what I've started doing is actually playing, like, throwback banda and corridos. Like, I started playing corridos from, like, the 2012, 2010 era. Oh, shit. Sure. Like, okay. that. It's And it's been doing very well. Yeah, because I talk to, like, hip-hop DJs, and they say Latin's done right yeah. now. Like, it seems like Latin's done. I mean, but hip-hop DJs can't really talk because yeah. hip-hop's like, <laughs> <laughs> hip-hop's in the same boat. <laughs> you know? Well, maybe, I mean, maybe, they're talking about, maybe they're talking about reggaeton. They're just saying there ain't no crossover hits, you know? There's yeah, there's, there's no, like, you know, Depote, Selena. there's no that, you know? There's play Selena. Play, yeah, play, just play, play Selena. Selena. Go to the Old Faithful, man. That yeah. one even worked in D.C. I was surprised. Oh, you played it? Yeah, it worked. It worked. It huh? worked. It's just you gotta you gotta get a good fucking remix because her shit is slow as shit. She's like eighty eight. Oh no, 91. I play originals, man. I, oh, you can. I love originals. No, I like originals too. Just some of them shits is too slow for me. <laughs> I gotta get like a ninety nine <laughs> BPM. What is he talking about? Like y'all, all I hear you're like the king of like playing four Selena songs in a row. Yeah, but they're all fast <laughs> paced. <laughs> like they're all remixed and they're up tempo. Nah, bro, you gotta let just let the OGs breathe, man. Nah, the slow. original ones. Oh man, just slow. let them do their work. They were made that way for a reason, man. I'm not making the West Coast shit where you play it at the zero. Like, I have to jack my shit up at least. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack it all the way up. Yeah, hey, for sure. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Whoa, pause. jack it all the way pause. up is crazy. <laughs> pause. <laughs> what I notice sometimes is I take records and I put them, like, I don't know if this is a bad habit, and I've been doing this since, like, the 2010s, mm-hmm. is okay. that, like, I will take certain songs that are, like, three or four years old, and I'll stop playing them. Mm, yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'll put them away. Yes. But but the thing is, they still work. Right. So like, motherfuckers, I hear them playing this. And I'm like, oh, I don't play that shit. So, but I'm making my I'm making like life harder for myself when I DJ. Yeah. Because I'm taking these things out when I'm like, oh damn, I should just be, I should be playing all of this shit. Like, I mean, but you find other stuff to play in. in yeah, but it doesn't right? translate as well to the crowd. Mm. You know I see what, what you're saying? saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do so, you do that just to not sound the same as everybody else? Oh, why do you do that? I think I think maybe the patterns back in the day, ten to fifteen years ago, was that like you know, like for example, Nelly Hot in here, Usher, yeah, yeah, those records are like classics now, right? Mm-hmm. But there was a point where it was played out, yes. So like, motherfuckers didn't want to hear it no more, yeah. You know, just like you know, like motherfuckers don't want to hear like, I mean, there was a point, there was a certain point where you couldn't play any J Balvin. Mm. It was kind of like J Balvin was a little played out. Yeah, I remember that. You know what I'm saying? Like around yeah. 2020, 2021, yeah. it was like, yo, you playing with Hante? Yeah. Like, why are you playing that shit? Yeah, you know, like why are you playing X? That shit is played out. And there was a there was a time where Ozuna was a little played out. Mm. It was like you know, like I would play Ozuna and I'd be like, but now Ozuna sounds like amazing right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but like 2017, 18, Ozuna was killing it. And then 19, 20, it was like, damn, why are you playing Ozuna? Yeah. It's not hitting as hard, right? Right, right. So I, I feel like. Those are the records I'm like, oh shit, take them out. And then all of a sudden, two years later, it's like, oh shit, we want to hear Zuna though. Zuna yeah. sounds good now. And you're just like, ah, oh, fucking make up your mind. And like, you <laughs> figure this shit out. Like, you I would like Flow Rider. Like, you I would never play Flow Rider low. No. Like, yeah, but like, all of a sudden, all that shit is back. Like, I even played Smack That, bro. And it worked. Oof. I don't know. And that's, that's a rough. tough one. Bro, I took that one out. Like, and I saw it. I was scrolling down and I saw it and I was like, all right, let's give it a try. Man, I was like, damn. It still hit. It still hit. That's crazy. It still hit. Smack that. That's Smack fucking that. brave. I wouldn't play yeah. that shit if you requested. But I mean, bit. I look up to my my idols. Like would do that. You know, like Zach. He would. Zach would play. Oh, four, four color Zach. Zach. Yeah, four color Zach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four color Zach. I just I basically took what he was doing and just like translated to the Latin world, mm. and it works. How so? Like I opened for Zach one time in Seattle, mm-hmm. and like I just heard him go like all over the place. He even played a Bad Bunny track, mm-hmm. and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And like he played kind of like. Back to what I was saying, where he played like rock or he played like old school hip hop song or like a West Coast stuff or yeah, like yeah. East Coast shit. And like I just did it with like Latin. I just started doing that, but the Latin version of those genres. Oh, so you're talking about mostly the risk factor? Yeah, of the, course. The fuck it. No well, no, risk, he's, also no talk, he's also talking about like kind of a West Coast style, which I talk to a lot of like New York motherfuckers about. Yeah. The West Coast style is like, yo, like in New York, we'll, we'll hit pockets. Mm. So we'll do like a dance hall set. 
four mm-hmm. to five songs, three, you know. Yep. Then we'll go to hip hop, four yep. to five songs. But they all kind of got to make sense. Mm-hmm. But in the West Coast, they're only taking one and then one and one. So you're taking like one dance hall song and then you go into one hip hop song and then you go to like uh, a classic yeah. song. Yeah, yeah. And then so there isn't like these uh-huh. pockets. No, no. You no, know no. what I'm saying? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, but, it, but so for, from a New Yorker's perspective, it sounds like all over the place. No, but actually, you know, I've, I've adapted that style where yeah. it's like five like rock and espanol songs right yeah, yeah. and then five banda songs and five merengue songs but that's how five I bachata do it. songs but that yeah. is kind of a new york style a little bit like west coast is like kind of all over the place mm. well i learned it from you for sure w- uh, watching east coast yeah but I, but i think like the, there's a there's like a beauty to how west coast dj's make like they kind of put everything together yeah but they make it blend and work mm. cuz it can it can sound chaotic it can be semi chaotic because there's so many left and rights. Right. It's like one song and, you know, left. Yeah. But I think, you know, the way some certain West Coast DJs like a Four Color Zach, right. they do it so well. Amazing. Amazingly. Yeah, beautiful. You know, and then, but then when you hear some other West Coast DJs, it's kind of like, it sounds a little chaotic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like West Coast DJs are really known for that, where they hop around. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they won't get into those pockets like East Coast, like New York motherfuckers. Are. I mean, sometimes yeah. I still do that. And I I mean, that one I learned from like AM because he was just like everywhere. Yeah, like, he was just like, was do, 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 like, But that's what know? I'm saying. Like, just, he'll just hit it. Like, yeah, you he know? was just everywhere. Yeah. He'll yeah. play like, you know, like 50 Cent in the club and then go into Oasis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas in New York, we would play a bunch of 50 Cent shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would run it and then do like a whole G unit joint. Yeah, yeah. And then we would get into like, we wouldn't play just one dance hall shit. We would play three three versions of one rhythm, switch to another rhythm, play another three, and then hop out and maybe do, you know, whatever we do. Yeah. You see, but. it's funny you say that because I remember I, I played a song. I forget what it was. It was a dance hall record. And then I played something else. And they're like, no, you have to play the whole rhythm. <laughs> and then I was like. In certain parties, you have to. And then I was like, oh, that's a thing. So the, that, then I adapted to the style of kind of do the sets, medley type of shit. Instead of just doing the one for one everywhere, yeah, yeah, but like they, you don't need to do that with with dance hall really, especially if you're on the West Coast. You don't need to go through the rhythms like nah, that. you don't. They don't. Yeah, even, I yeah. was like, they, they don't, don't even have know to do them that. out here. They don't even know them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I was like, oh, that's not how you play them. They're like, no, I'm like, oh, okay. who told you that? Uh, Peter. He told me that's I mean, not how he played him. No, yes, I mean if you want the East Coast, shut up. You Peter. know he he lived in the uh, East Coast for a bit, but yeah. I was just like. He was trying to put me up on game, and I was like, oh, so it's better off doing the little sets, pockets, instead of mm. boom, 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 boom. Because that's how I was. I used to just go one for one. But, yeah, maybe I'm, I don't know. No, I mean, I, and the thing is, that's why, I think that's why, like, New York quick mixes. Because we're going to go through these pockets of four to five songs. But we're going to go through them and run through them. Whereas, like, a West Coast DJ, they'll hop around, but they'll play, you know, a large amount of the song. Yeah, a verse. They'll play, like, yeah. two yeah. to three minutes of the song. Two yeah, verses. Yeah. And then hop out. In the, in the East Coast, you might just hear a chorus. The first yeah, the, chorus. I, I do choruses <laughs> for a lot of the songs. Yeah. No, nah, there's certain songs that I'm quick mixing, like I'm in and out, like the song you were talking about earlier. Like, like I'm yeah, in and out of that yeah. song. Yeah. But there's some songs like, I'm going to just let this thing breathe and do its thing. Like Bad Bunny Safaera played out. I love that song. That's probably like one of the greatest. You let the whole ever. song play? I No, I started from when Yango comes in. So like where the breakdown, when it starts like, uh, where it's like at a 96. Yeah. So I started from there, and then like right before it goes back to the eighty. Everyone plays that song differently. Yep. That's the crazy shit. Well, how do you play yeah. it? I just have this edit that goes to you know. <laughs> I <laughs> drop it. Okay, I don't even play that part. I drop it from "Mami que tu quiere," and then no, no, it goes "Mami tu quiere," and then it goes yeah. But I've I've seen people play from the beginning of like the trap. Version, mm. yeah. And I played. They, it's like sickle mode. Like they literally yeah. just play from the beginning. <laughs> that's a great no, but I'm saying, that, yeah, that's a great. That's a perfect comparison. Yeah. Everyone, to that song. everyone plays sickle mode differently. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's DJs that started from the win, <laughs> win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they'll, and they'll play their Travis Boom. joint. Yeah, they'll they'll play that whole joint. No, nah, but there's a new song called Muñequita. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Muñequita. Yeah, I love Muñequita, that record. Amazing I love record. Yeah. So Got me with you. now I'm playing Safira different because now I play it from the end of the of the trap part. And bring it back to that part I was originally telling you, because mm. um, Muñequita drops down into the eighty BPM yeah, too. Chiki. Yeah, the chiki chiki, 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 chaka, chiki, chaka. chiki, chiki, chaka, chaka. Yeah, exactly. Chaka. And I just like blend them right there together. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's good. I blend them. Should make an edit like that. T- <laughs> just throwing that out there. Yeah. You know? I'm glad. I'm glad she got like kind of across, like across. Yeah, that's hit. a great record, man. Yeah, yeah. 
I was like, this, this is been, gonna she, save reggaeton. No, I like think that. so. <laughs> no, but she she been dropping a lot of shit. Yes, yeah. Kaliukas, right? Kali Uchis. Kali Uchis. Uchis. Yeah. I call him mute, like Uchis, like Uchis. Like, 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 like Uchiwala. Like, like no, I can't like Uchis. Uchis. Like Mucus. What do you have? Like, Uchis. Kali <laughs> Wait, it's Kali Uchis. Kali Uchis. Uchis. Okay. Yeah. Uchis. My bad. Colombian chick. My bad, Kali. Mm, no, but she had some great songs. But I'm glad. But that's a Dembo song. That's no? a Dembo song. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah. Alpha's in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Dembo. I thought you'd call it a reggaeton and shit like. Oh, that. at the end is a reggaeton song. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, when yeah. it drops. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I like yeah. the beginning. Of that. <laughs> Would you say that's like one of the bigger records out this year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what's another big one? Lala, right? Lala. Kind of. It's like a crossover joint. Yeah. No. Nah. That's like a crossover. Really? Joint, though, no? Okie dokie. Okie dokie. The Mikey Towers record kind of works for the me. Mikey, right? Mikey Towers. <laughs> the Mikey Towers. That's you know? crazy. Wait, what's his name? Mike Towers. <laughs> Mike Towers. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey Towers. Towers. Yeah, I, we call him Mikey sometimes. Kelly <laughs> Lucas, Mikey Towers. We make it up shit at this point. No, that's like a crossover joint though. Is it? I'd have never played it. You never played it? Nah. I've what never happened? Played it. I played it. Opening set. Opening set. Yeah, that's the opening set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like kind of fun. It's like lighthearted. It's like shaggy. I'm, you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shaggy reggaeton, right? Shaggy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a perfect way to say it. That's great, yeah, right? that's great, yeah. It's like shaggy reggaeton. Yeah. Is Bo Ryan Castro Mr. Mr. Bombastic kind of Mr. shit? You know? Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bombastic <laughs> reggaeton, right? Mr. Lover, Lover, yeah, yeah, yeah it's like that. It's like that reggaeton. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna scare no white people away. I mean, yeah, that hits you know? too. I've been playing Shaggy again. I'm like, oh, this works. All of that shit. Anything yeah. single, and you could like. Because it sounds kind of like, what is it, dance hallish? Yeah. Yeah, it you is could blend yeah, yeah, you could just, dance You could just blend it with reggaeton and it works. Yeah. You know, it's something familiar. Yeah. yeah. I know, we, we don't want to typecast you as a Latin dude. Yeah. No. That's all we've been talking about. No, it's, it's okay. Music. You know what it is? It's like a lot of us, we get typecasted because we didn't grow up listening to hip hop. It took, I didn't get into hip hop until I got into high school. Mm. What? So like, it, it took me a while to get into hip hop. Because, like, growing up, it was, like, all Latin music. And then... Because whatever your family yeah, was playing. Yeah, because whatever my family was playing. Yeah. And then, um, for, like, a good moment, it was, like, all that reggaeton stuff. And my dad was buying CDs from, like, the alleys, you know? Yeah. So, it was, like, he was trying to get on game with reggaeton. And then, like, as he was getting on game, I was getting on game, you know? So, that's how I got, like, introduced to reggaeton. And um, it took me a minute. Like, it was 2005, I think. And I heard... Um, one of Biggie's records. Um, Damn, 2004. This one? That's crazy. Yeah. 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 It, was on, it was on Power 106, too. Like, Juicy? I don't know. No, Notorious? no, no. It wasn't Juicy. It was... Um, Damn, they didn't even have a back to Cal It was Back to Cali. Oh. Going back to Cali. Yeah, it was Back to Cali. And I heard, I was like, damn, this shit is hard. Like, I remember hearing it on the radio. I was like... I was going down fig. I was like, damn, this is crazy. The craziest part, that's that's a really West Coast Biggie record. Like, that's the first one he heard. Yeah, and that's the first one I heard. <laughs> not and juicy. Then, I'm going to tell you. Not hypnotized. <laughs> in the 2000s, that was every New Yorker's go-to record to be like, I'm on the West Coast. <laughs> like going back to Cali. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know there was a New York DJ up there. He's playing going back to Cali. Like, yeah. you know, this is, we love this that West record, Coast though. shit, you know? But it's at, like West Coast New Yorker <laughs> shit. Like, but at yeah. the end of high school and like once I graduated, I started like really getting into like um, New York hip hop. So mm -hmm. I like started listening to like Gangstar, Biggie, wow, and all that stuff. Damn, like, when you were eighteen, 19, you got exposed yeah, 18, late. 19, yeah, I got yeah, exposed late. super late. Yeah, fucking late. And then that's what like made me want to do like more of like the engineering side too, because I figured out all my favorite beats are DJ Premier. Yeah, mm -hmm. like all my favorite beats were like DJ Premier, mm -hmm. uh, Easy Mo B. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I want to D and D Studios. Yeah, man, mm -hmm. like notorious. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny when you when we talk about Latin parties. I just think it's so important because like we never had that ten years ago. Yeah, or fifteen years ago. Or when so like I, when I hear, when I hear like motherfuckers like I don't want to be known just for Latin parties. I'm like right. I don't think there's a problem with that. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing, and I think it's like important. That you maintain that shit, right? And you don't you don't lose it because so for me there wasn't that presence before, you yeah. know. And it was like you know I remember going to Miami in the two thousands and they you know like Cuban motherfuckers are telling me to oh. stop playing reggaeton. Yeah. They hate reggaeton. They're like stop playing this ghetto shit, you know. Yeah. But it's like to where we are right now. I think it's like it's amazing. So like we got to keep that industry alive. And to me, there isn't many great DJs that are doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think you're one of the few DJs. Thank you, thank you. Who can like that. touch on every genre and every aspect? Like you said, like you're almost like a library of knowledge of music. Yeah, you know, from like you know, we're talking about cumbia, mm -hmm. punta, or you know, everything. You yeah. know, so like I, for me, I just think like it's important that 
you know, you, you keep representing that and, and then you kind of expand the culture. Yeah. That's why you doing like all this production with your brother. I think it's a great opportunity for you to expose like a whole bunch of music to Latin community that they haven't been exposed to because it, it, it goes so deep. It's one of the main things I love about West Coast Latin parties. I feel like you can hit way more genres than an East Coast Latin party. Really? I feel like they focus on like Dembo. They focus specifically on certain mm. genres. Yeah. But I feel like the West Coast is a little bit more open format. Mm -hmm. Like you can kind of touch a little bit more on, on every genre, right? Yeah. A little bit. I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. And that's crazy too because I didn't think about it until you said it now because the things I can't play here I can play over there, yeah, yeah. but over here I can play. There is a lot more genres I can it's play over a here. Wide more yeah, variety. Yeah, it is a yeah, lot more. Yeah, like I could play a lot more Latin pop. I could play uh, rock and español a little more. I can play um, like all the Mexican regional stuff. Yeah, I mean I can still get away with like some of the bachata stuff and merengue tracks. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like only out here could I play like a little bit of bachata, then go into like Sondito or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then like, you know, hop around, yeah. play a little Jersey club and then, you know, go into reggaeton and then go to like Dembo and then go to Latin Tech House and then play a little guaracha and just hop all over all over the place. Yeah. But in like New York and the East Coast, you can't you can't be that wide open like that. But that's also what's amazing about the parties I do. Mm -hmm. Like Travesuras is uh strictly reggaeton. Like they focus heavy on reggaeton. Yeah. Like that's like just little like a little reggaeton session right but like altura they like did so well to like i guess train the crowd to like be open to like everything right and like just like oh remember this remember that mm -hmm. same with dmv but theirs is like yo we're playing all this shit again you know and like they're really good at playing a lot of this um i can play a lot of the stuff i play out here over there as well with with that part like that west coast yeah west yeah coast shit yeah out there on the east coast like i played i I remember playing rock and español for for adobo and like we were on two floors like it was just it's i thought crazy. the yeah it was crazy i thought the floor was gonna cave in when i <laughs> when i dropped that record Jesus. yeah i played oye mi amor at, at adobo and i was like wow like they just went nuts wow yeah, yeah adobo to me is very it has is west coast dj latin accepted really yeah. really well i haven't i, like I still we gotta go there yeah yeah y'all gotta y'all gotta make yeah. it out there and they have like a bunch out. of djs they had a uh, some guys out there from Texas, they get the New York, the New York cats all the mm -hmm. time. They bring me out there. Yeah, I was talking with Nopa Slaps, you know, from Army oh, yeah, Ribs. He, he was there. just out there. He yeah. was like, oh, man, it was great. Amazing. You know, he's Salvi, too. He yes. was like, I got to play some Salvi jams out there. It was Smoke. like it was a dope fucking party. <laughs> yeah, it yeah was man. He, man, Nopa is a well of knowledge of music as well. Like, mm -hmm. me and him, we were chopping it up when I went to um, San Francisco, and we were just talking about how, like, we were kind of like the same culture but we grew up different like mm -hmm. he was more influenced with like the deeper cuts and like i had like more of a uh, mexican like uh growing up just because uh, i was surrounded by so many mexicans yeah 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 well that's natural in la right yeah yeah it's, normal. it's like you kind of got accepted to you got to either get accepted to the black community or like the mexican <laughs> community kind yeah. of right a little bit yeah a little bit and it's like you know it's, it's a beautiful thing to be growing up with uh, so many cultures and that's i think that's one problem in la sometimes where because it's a gang culture, everything's segregated. Mm -hmm. But, like, we'd never see, like, what's so special about, like, all the cultures that are in L.A. But you're starting to see it now a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little more. Yeah. Little, just, like, a little bit, but baby steps, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we finally got you on the podcast, man. I know, You're going to be in Vegas soon, you said? I'm going to come hang out. I, I've been wanting to hear you spin. Yeah. But, like, when I see the recap videos and, like, on Instagram, I'm like, oh, man, I got to see this motherfucker spin. Yeah, man. So, I was actually very surprised that you hit me up. I was like... What, what's going on right now? <laughs> nah, why? Why? Why you say that? I don't know. Like sometimes, like we don't see like the things we're doing. Yeah. Um. So, I see. Like, you know. I see. It. I don't know. Crooked sees, bro. Like, I, I see everything. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I don't see like what I'm doing, and like uh, my brother has to tell me like, "Yo, like you're actually doing like some pretty solid things." Like yeah, I'm yeah. just to me, it's just like, "Yo, I'm just doing something I love." Yeah, because you're, you're just, just grinding, right? Right. He's yeah, on yeah, grind. Just grind. Yeah. No, but I, I see like the thing is like I see a lot of DJs. It's the reason why like DJs like you stand out, and you know other DJs that stand out. You know, I notice it. You know, you have that thing. You know what what to play to cry. You're playing different shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, we all see it. Like, motherfuckers notice it. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, maybe I should be more vocal about being like, yo, that, that was dope. You know, and you're killing it. Yeah. But I just I just like to take notes from the side and to see how people move. Be like, oh, okay, like, it's been two years and they're very, like, they move very, like, a gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Or like, yeah, yeah. Yo, that's a good motherfucker. Like, yeah. I like how he's moving. I don't like I don't like motherfuckers killing it and then they're all loud and shit and I'm like oh, I don't need that kind of energy on a podcast so right, I don't want, right. 
I'm going to see how this motherfucker moves a little bit. But, you know, like, I talk to people, nothing but great things have been said about you. Thank you. And dude. every time I see you, you're doing something dope and you're playing something dope. Mm -hmm. And you're even putting me onto stuff. So I'm like, oh, like, yo, like, that's dope. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll send you that crate of my stuff, man. Yeah. We're actually yeah, going to put out a bunch of stuff like pretty soon. Like we made a second account too. So be on the lookout for all that. I'm, I'm looking forward to your production. I want to see y'all do some, yeah, some, yeah. some good shit. Next Take. time we're going to interview Cook by T and he can sit on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah I'll sit on the sidelines. <laughs> hey, man, he's going to be big. He, he's pretty good. Nice. All right, JQ, man. Thanks for coming through. Hey, man. man. Thanks, guys. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.